Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, RockAuto.com, and State Farm. But right now, let's get to work on our tans. Now the vehicle for doing just that isn't a new one for you Motor Week fans. We've tested a front drive Chrysler LeBaron Coupe earlier. But with its overhead surgically removed, we found that this LeBaron was a whole new experience. And at between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars each, it could be for Chrysler a profitable resurrection of sunnier days gone by. I thought the styling of the LeBaron quite handsome before, and it still is. In fact, you have to move well back to the windshield before anything new happens. But from here on, Chrysler and the masters of cars and concepts have converted this compact luxury mobile into perhaps the most pleasing convertible since the Mercedes 380 SL. About the only complaint is maybe there's too much top. The inclusion of a small side window right here would make it even more attractive. The top is an easy one to lower. Just pop the two latches on the reinforced windshield frame and then we push a button. The top is fully automatic. Once it's lowered, there's a tonneau cover that matches the upholstery and it goes in place with traditional convertible snaps. And surprise, instead of no back seat so common to most convertible conversions, Chrysler has included a cushioned shelf just right for Fido or a couple of very young fresh air fiends. And in addition, the large LeBaron trunk has been retained for plenty of space for all of your fun in the sun gear. All in all, a very neat job of packaging from Chrysler. So we know it's lovely to look at, but is it delightful to drive? As you'd expect, it drives just like any other Chrysler LeBaron, and that means soft, like luxury cars usually are, but without the wallowing of past behemoths. And it still has lots of body roll, complete with quite a bit of oversteer. That's the tendency of the rear wheels to come unglued from the pavement in sharp turns. At higher speeds, it was more of the same, but if you do have to slither around that tractor trailer, you should be able to retain both good control and style. From 30 miles per hour, panic stops averaged 40 feet. That's not too long, but not short either. There is plenty of nose dive, but pull and fade were absent. From 55 miles per hour, all our criticisms of Chrysler's front drive braking systems returned. Stops were still within reason at 140 feet after six panic stops, but the back end still wants to play swing around much too easily. And the extra 200 pounds the conversion adds to this ragtop's weight puts an extra strain on the optional Mitsubishi made 2.6 liter four cylinder. A time of six seconds is slow by our standards in the 40 to 55 mile per hour passing test. And things proved no better from a standing start. With quite a bit of engine hesitation, we recorded fair times of 10.5 seconds at 48 miles per hour over our 500 foot course, and 19.8 seconds and 68 miles per hour over the drag strip's quarter mile. But then you wouldn't buy the LeBaron convertible for performance. It reacts adequately enough for the showboat it was born to be. Same with mileage. The EPA rates the LeBaron at 23 city, 31 highway. Our 100 mile combined test loop produced a very reasonable 26, with the top down. And although convertibles can be noisy with lots of rattles, our example seemed amazingly tight and well built with improved fit and finish. The LeBaron convertible is also available from Dodge as the 400. The cars differ only slightly in grille, tail lights, and trim. Together, they represent the first Detroit sanctioned soft tops since the 76 Cadillac Eldorado. Chrysler actually had over 3,000 orders for this car before production began. And despite the fact that rag tops never really were practical for those of us who live in a true four season climate, convertibles like our LeBaron were, are, and probably always will be part of our most enjoyable fantasies.